So me, I can record now. Okay. I, I'll record now. Okay, so yes, good morning. Sir, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, sir, we are live now. Thank you, Maharshi. So good morning, everyone. And uh, uh, today we are doing a quick audit of uh, trauma cases which came to us for in last um, last one, one and a half months. We, we have selected uh, some cases which can uh, give message. Uh, for all the treating, uh, all the pediatric orthopedicians. So the format is uh, current fellows would present uh, those cases in a prescribed format. We have panelists, uh, Dr. Gaurav, uh, Vikas is there, and Chinmay, who are our uh, ex alumni. And then we have uh, external experts, uh, Thomas is there. We, Deepak is there, Sandeep Patwardhan is going to join. So we will uh, ask to them that what they would have done in this situation. So let's start. Uh, Meet and Goda, please start uh, presenting and then we'll take the discussion. Yes, Welcome, Ak Akanksha Jai Singhe. Dr. Jai Singh, uh, good morning. Dr. Jai Singh is from Sri Lanka. Yeah. Good morning. Yes, Goda, please start. Good morning, everyone. So the first case is like we had a six and a half year old girl who presented with history of fall over the left elbow while skating. And on examination, there was swelling and tenderness over the left elbow, more so on the medial aspect. There were no distal neurovascular deficits. And the radiograph is this. We got a AP and a lateral view of the elbow, and it showed a. Okay, knee. so uh, so Goda, let let's stop here. And Gaurav, would you read this X-ray? Yes, sir. So, uh, so I feel uh, so there is a fracture of the medial epicondyle. It's a displaced fracture, and. Uh, Apart from that, other aspects look normal to me. It's, yeah. Right. So, Vikas, uh, now, do you think this needs uh, management? The distance we measured on X-ray is about 4.5 millimeters. Yes. What literature says? Can we conserve it or we should fix it? This is a non-dominant hand. So, the fracture fragment appears to be rotated. So, we need to fix it. That's right. So, how could you judge that it is rotated? So, the metaphyseal fragment is appearing uh, lateral to. That's right. So, Kaiser, would you like to do something to confirm that this is a rotated fragment or <clears throat> you believe it is rotated? We can always ask for a CT, 3D CT scan to uh, confirm it. But okay. uh, I would say it's rotated. Most of Perfect. the time, lateral condyle fracture, after fracture, the fragment is so far behind, I, most of the time it's rotated. Sir, an opposite side elbow is the least we can do. Yeah, this is extremely good point. So we always take contralateral x-ray and see uh, whether it's rotated or just displaced. The, the current uh, treatment indication is more than five millimeter displaced displacement and a dominant hand, a, pa a paper from Ippolito, if there's a very nice paper, and they have a series of uh, conservatively treated medial epicondyle. If you have time, you can go through, and they have treated all medial epicondyles conservatively without any resultant instabilities. So uh, Deepak, I agree with you that uh, in contralateral X-ray, Chinmay is of opinion to fix it. Yeah, sir, can, Buddha, sir, sir yeah. Can, I, can I add something, sir? Yes, please. Uh, so just like a Shinton line in neck femur, we can also trace the metaphysis line and mm -hmm. we can go up to the middle epicondyle. If it is not in a one line, we can say that it's a fracture of middle epicondyle. Mm, yeah. And yeah, that's a, an early sign. That's right. But we yes. should have x-ray of both the sides to uh, to comment on that, right? Yes, yes let's, uh, let's see what we have done, Goda, too. So this was a non-dominant hand and a less than 5 mm displacement. 
so we went ahead and got a contralateral yeah. side x-ray radiograph so this on the left as of the contralateral side on the right as of the fracture site so we got to know yeah we got to know that the fragment was rotated right so that's that's this uh, a comparison view is always right now deepak how would you treat it how would you fix it sir i have also uh, read that article which were you were suggesting ki uh, most of these cases can be managed conservatively whenever there is no incarceration of the fragment into joint or no ulnar nerve involvement so in my hand i will manage this case conservative okay yes gorav uh, how would you uh, treat it so i would like to uh... get an mri to see because sometimes on x rays the uh, we can't assess the exact displacement and rotation although on x ray it looks quite displaced and rotated so i would like to get an mri and assess um, and yes uh, as as we say that if it is uh, as dr deepak has told that if it is not intra articular or if there are not uh, no ulnar nerve symptoms then we can conserve it so my uh inclination would be to conserve okay when it comes to this webinar everyone starts conserving huh anyways so let's see uh, what vikas has to say vikas yeah i think we can go for fixation because recently i've seen a fra similar fracture it was a pretty old fracture uh, with a tardy ulnar nerve palsy yeah so that that is an instability and a progressive valgus can lead to that thomas is with us thomas uh, how would you manage this yeah like you said uh, getting the contralateral x ray is important the size right. of the fragment and the displacement and uh, i'm just wondering whether a good ultrasonologist will tell will be able to tell whether it's rotated and it, and the articular surface is pointing the other way right those factors so, will determine my uh, whether I, and it be, being non dominant i might be tempted to leave it uh, untreated if it's not too too far from the yeah actually no this is a 180 degree flipped fragment i will show you the intra op pictures yes gorav what do you want to say So I want to say that I would also like to assess the stability, uh, if I can. I mean, see, in young children, you know, when you try to uh, move, it, they are they are really cranky. Yeah. So you don't know whether it is they are guarding it or uh, it's a real uh, instability. But you will see. Goda, please show. Uh, move ahead and. Yes, sir. So the classic. Uh, yeah, Kaisa, you you Kaisa, your comment. So I I would like to. Uh... transposition the ulnar nerve and then fix it with a ko wire i think that would be a good idea because in the long run that may cause some tardy ulnar nerve per se other than that cosmetic effect is there also uh, cosmesis so like transposition is uh, indicated in cases with tardy ulnar nerve palsy if they develop uh, in future there are incidents when the patient has significant cubitus valgus and tardy ulnar nerve palsy the the valgus is not hampering them and then you just do the uh, uh, transposition but to do in an acute case will be a bit overkill let's see what okay. we have done uh, yeah goda go ahead uh, yes sir so the medial condyle like here we can see the ulnar nerve we explored and isolated it the medial condyle was 180 degree rotated and we flipped it back to its original position and later fixed it with a cc screw yeah so can you go back to the uh, previous slide so you can see that uh, the fragment you can see the metaphysis when you open once you drain the hematoma so always a principle medial epicondyle you open it and fix it and lateral condyle uh, if it is reducible and you do an arthrogram you can manage it by close means but medial epicondyle always open because you see this ulnar nerve is lying just behind it and you have to retract it and then to put this fragment so it's difficult to understand that this would heal in this way which is bit distal and anterior and uh, uh, the fle the flexors would keep on pulling them 
So I uh, once we opened it, we realized that it's better to fix it uh, this way. Yeah, go ahead. And the retraction of ulnar nerve was is very important. So this is uh, post fixation with CC screw, and the immediate post op radiographs shows good reduction. And this is one month post surgery. So we, we started range of motion at a month and uh, 4 mm cc uh, would do the job. Now, if the fragment is too small, then you can use K wires. Okay. You bend it uh, in front and then remove it after a month. But here, the what you see is a just bony part. So cartilaginous part is bigger than this. So we place the screw. So right. what, is your, what is your cutoff uh, regarding the displacement because actual displacement which is so which we can see on x-ray is way much on ct yeah so what we see on x-ray is not a neutral uh neutral view so you it's a rotated view the medial epicondyle lies little posterior so people have uh, recommended that you do a ct scan <clears throat> but on x-ray this was looking displaced and it was flipped and reversed so i think we should fix this because this may go into non-union and pain because it is not the metaphysis not facing the metaphysis. It was the epiphysis which was facing. So any flipped medial epicondyle with displacement more than 5 millimeters should be fixed regardless it is dominant or non-dominant. See, so There are the literature reporting uh, even the non-union are asymptomatic in case of medial epicondyle. No, no, but the, see, if... One out of five becomes painful, no? Then it's a problem. And what happens? It goes. Distally. Then it goes distally, and then it becomes very difficult to fix. And this is a very straightforward surgery. So non-unions, where the fragment has not been displaced, I mean not been flipped, then you can leave it. Medial epicondyle, not medial condyle, as mentioned the classification slide. Yes, that's right. Yes, Chinmay. Uh, sir, Hello. we had one more view in this. Uh, so there is a one is axial view for the distal humerus, which can show the actual displacement and the rotation. Also. This was a paper coming from Dr. Edmonds, I think. Okay. So they show rather than going, going for the axial view, how, how they take axial view? It's a 45 degree oblique. So I can share the paper in our group. So they okay. come up comparison with normal X-ray, CT scan, and the axial view. So, so that is in external oblique view. No, sir. Axial view is like uh, what we take for shoulder that they similarly took for the distal. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. So yeah, so that, share that share that paper. That will be of great help. Yes, sir. Sure. What if it is one month old? Should we open or leave it, Doctor Sharad? <laughs> One month old, then I will look for the signs of instability, pain. If it is child doesn't have pain, then you can leave it. If there is no instability, then you can leave it. If it is unstable, painful, then you go open and, and fix it. Sometimes you are not able to fix at its native place. You might have to fix a little distal, you know. Yeah, let's move on to the next case. And those participants who are not, you know, coming, I mean, talking can mute yourself because we, we listen, I mean, have a lot of background noise. Uh, if it is well, uh, this frag fragment is too small, you can always fix with a wire or a suture anchor. Gaurav. Yes, Goda. Let's take another next case. So here we have a six-year-old boy. He had a history of polytrauma. Uh, he had a road traffic accident and uh, he uh, had chest trauma and uh, abdominal trauma along with it. He had a hemoperitoneum with splenic laceration, uh, bilateral pleural effusion. And he presented to us with this x-ray. <clears throat> yes, so um, uh, Vikas, would you read this x-ray? What do you find abnormal here? So there's a fracture of the subprocanter uh, area. Uh, along with that, there is a dislocation of hip joint. Uh, yes, that's right. Yes, a tabulum of pelvis. Yeah, so pelvis looks okay. Uh, Gaurav, you want to add anything to that? 
so something strange is that there is a dislocation along with that there is a proximal fracture which is highly uncommon either we see fracture or we see dislocation so that is strange for me yeah so uh, meet found that this is there are only three cases reported in world literature so far so there is combination also you know there is an uh, <laughs> But child was so sick, you know, uh, we could not take other views. So, yeah, that's right, Pastor. So, the <laughs> Thomas is here. Thomas, <clears throat> how would you manage this uh, polytrauma case? What is the, what should be the priority of management? Yeah, so obviously the chest trauma and the abdominal trauma should be looked into first. All the ABCs of uh, yeah. resuscitation. Make sure hemodynamically dynamically the patient is stable. Abdomen is fine. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> splint. So it took about uh, you know six days for uh, child to become hemodynamically stable. Pediatric surgical team decided to treat all these uh, uh, splenic and uh, liver lacerations conservatively. Uh, the pleural effusion uh, part required probably an ICD insertion. But that also got managed. Now at six days we have this situation. So how you would go for it, you know? The hip dislocation part, whether there's a articular fragment or not, I think some more some more imaging is required. I think. Okay. So whether a CT I, or a uh, MR. If yeah, possible. so uh, a CT scan to see whether there is any, uh, or an MRI to see whether there is any head fragment or establular fragment yeah. with the dislocation is there. That's right. I I, I looked at the X-ray and uh, compared the uh, uh, establishment that looked okay, yeah. and I didn't think of the head, but I agree with you that further imaging yeah. could have There's helped. Now, osteochondral uh, osteochondral yeah. fragment. Now let's assume that MRI shows that there is no osteochondral fragment. This is an isolated injury. Then how would you manage this? So I think <clears> that this dislocation may uh, yeah, this is tricky. I'm just wondering whether so this this dilemma you know we also had whether to do the hip reduce, first or the shaft uh -huh, first. reduce the hip first or the femur first. Yeah, can we reduce the hip? Yeah, so me take us through the dilemma and then we'll uh, inquire with it all. Yeah, so, so this, was... Uh, th this was the dilemma that should we reduce the hip first or the shaft? And if the hip, then how do we reduce it? Should we just try for a simple traction, just try and pull the head back into the acetabulum or should we use a shaft spin in the neck and then try to reduce it? And if we plan to do a, uh, reduce the shaft femur first, uh, which was what was done in the literature that has been reported. So should we use a tens to fix it, a temporary external fixator, or should we open and plate it, give a rigid fixation and then give a traction to reduce the hip? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> this was the dilemma. The, in the literature says that they fix the femur fragment first and then it uh, made a one unit and then they pulled on the hip. Uh, so Gaurav, how would you go for it? Uh, Meet, can you go back to the X-ray? I would first uh, try to uh, joystick the head inside. I'll try to reduce the head inside. If I am able to do it easily, then uh, I will then proceed with fixation of the shaft. But mm. if not, then I would first try to, then I would fix the uh, shaft, make it a unit and mm. then use it. <laughs> Right. Uh, yes, because what do you think? How this will get get in? In, uh, in any case, uh, I would have preferred to go with fix, uh, reduction of the head first, either mm -hmm. closed by the assisted method or if it is required, then an open method. But okay. uh, the, uh, the literature uh, which says in these acute settings, whenever there are dislocation anteriorly, we should approach anteriorly. When the dislocation is posteriorly, we should approach posteriorly. So it all depends on the position of the dislocation. Yeah, so but you wanted to fix, uh, reduce the hip first and then? Then fix it. Okay. Yes, Vikas, do you have any other thoughts or you think on the same line? Yes, I think on the same line. I would have gone the, for the same thing. Mm -hmm. 
if i can reduce uh, the head uh, by close means mm -hmm. so we can do that yeah so literature shows that they want to make the femur one unit and then try to pull it but uh, so we had all this dilemma and then i thought let's just give the traction first and see what happens you know if it doesn't reduce then uh, and femur aligns then we'll fix femur and then pull this as a same segment i also thought that uh, if hip is not coming then i might put an temporary external fixator and then pull that on that fixator gently under uh, complete relaxation so with all these ideas uh, we went in and all uh, dilemmas and confusions uh, meet show what we we have done sir what was your uh, approach or thought if uh, the close reduction was not possible like you if you will be needing open reduction then what will be your approach so if close you know, reduction okay. if it is not possible i my first thought was i will put an external fixator you know, i kept the lrs ready i'll mm -hmm. put one and one shan spin the proximal and distal fragment fix with an lrs and then pull on the fixator that was my first thought and uh, let's see what what happened <coughs> so we uh, try to gently uh, reduce the head and put it back into the acetabulum and uh, that uh, worked well and the hip was reduced so we managed close reduction for the hip so this this happens you know like uh, you give full relaxation and and pull it so we know that the bones are not joined but the soft tissue is there which is uh, soft tissue is not broken so a, a stretch on soft tissue and then the head came on the margin and with just gentle pressure from the posterior side it jumped in and once it jumped in it uh, it was difficult to redislocate it you know so it was a stable reduction but still we fix it with a temporary wire and meet show further so we transfix this uh, to temporarily to the uh, acetabulum with a wire and uh, after that and we went and then go back to that slide so when i did this i was very happy looking at the ap view can that now it'll be very easy to fix the pima with tens but when i looked at the lateral view the proximal fragment was in significant flexion so uh, so vikas what do you think this was remaining in flexion because this uh, probably iliosuas or something is pulling it up it was not coming down so we can I... wait and know for that ha huh? fixation of shaft femur we can stretch it out slow slow are you can reduce any or other way no sir head was reduced head to reduce ho gaya head head reduce ho gaya shaft femur was not reducing okay so then we need to pull that pin out again <laughs> we did that we pulled the pin out but still the fragment was remaining uh, in flexion okay so yeah that's what we did gorov we opened the fracture we i i mean we tried a lot but uh, it it we could not reduce it by close means we i think we passed the tens from the distal fragment and then also manipulated that uh, if we can achieve reduction if we can maneuver one nail through but it was not uh, going through so we had to open at the last as a last resort and show me what happened so this is how uh, we could pass yeah <clears throat> we got close reduction for the hip but for the shaft femur which we thought would uh, reduce in the close manner turned out to be a more difficult challenge so this is the follow up that we have at one month so now uh, it's about one and a half months and child is now walking fortunately he has uh, uh, improved on all, all his uh, surgical site you know pleural effusion he liver spleen everything has healed well without any surgery just an icd was removed before child was discharged and uh, femur now child has started weight bearing with walker we can try pushing the proximal fragment with an artery for uh, Uh, this was not possible there what when i opened you know there was some muscles lying in between and even after uh, taking those muscles off you know it was very difficult to uh, reduce it 
why people with head injury throw exuberant callus i think there the thomas sorry micro motion micro motion and also some says there is some factor releasing from the brain huh. yeah injury causing yes yes right thomas mm-hmm. do you callus. have thomas do you have idea why there is exuberant callus in head injury patients yeah they say there there some factor is released uh, some neurotrophic factor i think they characterized it some recently i'm not sure what exactly i forgot on the okay. factor which is from the hippocampus i think so this, this child did not have head injury but this is my uh, my struggle during reduction that shows in the form of periosteal <laughs> elevation and callus this is and all pure is pure hydrogenic post of spica yeah yeah we we applied uh, spica i think one and a half spica for uh, about a month with pediatric surgeons being around so that this abdomen can be observed so we we applied spica yeah okay so let let's move on to the next case any comment by the time uh, goda starts another one I, I have a similar i have a similar case uh, but that was 6 uh, months neglected ah <clears throat> so matlab uh, it had a deformity at the femur and the head was dislocated posteriorly as tablum was okay hmm. so i am uh, like i've given that case for posi trauma part so maybe if they select the nail present there sorry what did you do uh, you went on posterior approach no the anterior approach because it was 6 months old ah uh, so literature is, there is no consensus for the approach in that low, late age uh, and since to start with the dislocation was slight subluxation but the child started walking and the primary surgeon uh, left it uh, untreated the head mm. and with time because of the weight bearing the it dislocated much superiorly yeah that's so for a that, more reduction in challenging situation it is yes uh sujit is asking any attempt to remove the intramedullary fragment no sujit we don't remove it uh, it it uh, it kind of uh, heals and remodels reduction of hip versus reduction of fracture first how does it matter gora people think that uh, a real uh, dislocation of hip needs a proper uh, lever arm to reduce it and so the femur if femur is intact we can reduce it well that's what uh, everyone thinks no yes, that's let... a nice nice research just a comment yeah um, i think nicely managed but I, i would have been tempted to use a submuscular plate a small plate for a subtrochanteric fracture rather than a tense nail yeah see we, like i i already passed the tense thinking that this for so uh, you subtroch a little uh, proximal metaphyseal we have been doing uh, enders for ubcs and all uh, so yeah we were okay with it but we have already passed the tens we have all uh, inventory ready but that can be done that's i agree with you okay then uh, goda please take us to third case so the next case a 7 year old girl um, a 7 year old girl Uh, presented to us two days after a fall on an outstretched hand, uh, she complained of pain and swelling in the left wrist and forearm. She was given a plaster slab elsewhere, and she presented us in this way. There was swelling, deformity, capitis, and abnormal mobility in the lower forearm, wrist, and distal forearm. So the radiographs. Uh, the ap and the lateral view these were taken elsewhere and they showed distal and radius fracture both bone four and fracture so is there a is it a galiazi variant and how will we manage this fracture now yeah, let's go back to x ray kaisa what do you think yes sir looks like it's a galiazi variant and uh, how uh, how many days passed after trauma two days sir Two days. Um, I think we can try close reduction once again. I, I, uh, radius uh, has uh, intact periosteum and there is some bowing. 
I think uh, close reduction can be tried. Right. Yeah, so Gaurav, what do you think about this? Yes, sir. It is a Galeazzi variant as there is distal third fracture of radius with dislocation of distal radio ulna joint. Mm -hmm. Fracture of the ulna. So, yes, first attempt would be close reduction. Mm -hmm. If it okay. Will, yeah. Yeah, Vikas, do you have any any other thoughts? Chinmay? Or, or for, that, for anyone, like that, any, any different? In fact, Allah generally they dislocate. Do you have to go posteriorly is it intact Allah? Wherever there is an Allah fracture along the radius fracture is high, very unlikely to have DURG dislocation. And this X-ray is also not true lateral. Okay. Yeah. That's right. So the first thing is uh, we should have a an ideal view or we should have a comparison view that is it a, com is it a real Galeazzi's or just the distal uh, radius ulna fracture, you know. So Goda, show the uh, further how yeah. we did. So we got comparative yeah. x-rays of the contralateral site, AP and lateral. And so one, I, yeah, so one can see that uh, a bit of dorsal, this is an oblique view and be, the distal ulna is bit dorsal, the ossified part of metaphysis, you know, and the distal radio ulna relation is not much disturbed. So it doesn't look like a Typical uh, Galeazzi's uh, fracture, but maybe a bit of variant kind of thing. So show Buddha what we did. <clears throat> yeah. Whenever there's an Allah fracture, it's highly unlikely to have a divided dislocation along with the radius fracture. Yeah, so there, there is a variant described, Deepak. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so just like in Montage, there's Galeazzi's variant. I, you can look into it. But I agree that uh, now see we see dislocations with fractures. You know, you saw the sharp femur. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Anyways, so that's right. But uh, Goda, show what we did. So we attempted a closed reduction under relaxation under general anesthesia, and this is immediate post reduction, post reduction radiograph. So would you would you accept this, Gaurav, Deepak? Vikas, or you would do, do something else? Sir, do you intraoperatively break the radius to correct the alignment, or you just? Oh, uh, we gave traction, and you know, while doing maneuver, we we felt a crack. So uh, the unicortical me might have con converted bicortical fracture, but with the ulna ulna was uh, a bit uh, bayonet. The Kaiser says you accept it. Sir, I, as I have taken the child in OT and I am doing it under anesthesia, I would like to reduce it. Okay, you want to align it 100%? Not we 100%. also felt a pop, you know, so the ulna also set at its place. Now, if you compare the AP with then normal side AP, it's like it looks normal. You see this, uh, the X-ray on your uh, left. So, I yes. accepted it, you know. Uh, then and it, it will remodel. The young child, six, seven years old. So I, I accepted it. Yeah, Goda, show the next x-ray. This is the acceptability criteria for age less than 10 years and one centimeter bionetting over here is acceptable. Yeah. So our taken messages, contralateral radiograph can help in defining the fracture pattern. Right. Do we uh, did we have uh, any further follow up on this, Goda? Recently done, uh, just about ten days back. It, it's not. It's see, here. We don't have a follow up radiograph yet. Okay, fine. Okay, so let's the, move. So the distal radio ulnar joint was reduced. Yeah, that's uh, the distal radio ulnar joint was look well aligned, and radius looks looked okay. There was bayonet in ulna. And I, I am hopeful that this will remodel. So I just, I'll update you guys, but we, I, we conserved and child is, I think three <coughs> weeks out. Follow-up X-ray showing healing of both radius and Allah. We'll keep it on for further 10 days and remove it. Yes. Let's go on to the next stage. 
this case just shows that uh, an x contralateral x ray is important that's uh, yeah. next case uh, yes sir <coughs> so uh, the fourth case so we have a 10 year old girl uh, she presented to us with a history of twisting injury of the ankle while getting up from the school bench uh, this happened 12 hours ago and uh, she came to us with uh, mild swelling and tenderness of the right ankle so we had the x-rays done the both the ap and the lateral views so so let uh, vikas or uh, kaiser you can you comment what is this Sir, what sort of it's called triplane fracture hmm it is a metaphyseal fragment with a epiphyseal slip that's right right so how would you manage this uh, vikas or what further studies you would like to do it we can get a ct to confirm it that's right yeah so i think kaiser have made the lines kaiser can you uh, remove this blue lines if you can sir uh, the host can remove which lines sorry sir ah uh, that's okay but kaise remove karne ka um yeah. someone using the phone just using uh, the whiteboard will stop is that the reesha the presentation sir it is coming ना 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 हो गया एक तो निकल गया भाई तो उसके ऊपर okay. क्लिक करना है सिर्फ अच्छा ओके ओके लेट मी डू दिस मेरे से तो नहीं हो रहा है एनीवेज ah. चलो एनीवेज नो प्रॉब्लम लेट लेट्स मूव अहेड सो वी गॉट द सिटी स्कैन डन yeah and these are the three views that we have okay so vikas would you read this ct scan now so it's a triplane fracture along with it there is a medial medullary fracture also is there yeah, yeah. so, so there is a medial type 4 epiphyseal injury shorter there is type 4 hmm so is it we we had a discussion between me me then goda is it a three part or a two part or a four part uh, uh, triplane it's a triplane fracture because we see it in all the three planes but is it a two part or a three part how would you define it and how it would uh, 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 i mean would change the management so what i uh, always <coughs> try to teach is you get a ct scan ct scan is must and then you make your decisions of uh, trajectory of your screws uh, based on the uh, axial cuts so if you see there is bottom axial cut on the most lateral side i'm um, sorry on the most left side you see can you see my arrow by any chance or not no sir. no okay okay fine so me can you show the most lateral so yeah. most left is a metaphysis and as you go distal 1 2 3 4 5 so the sixth image yeah that is a cartilage do you know see more whitish and grayish that is the growth plate and then you go further down it's an uh, epicondyle so it's a medial epicondyle so you can see there's a saltaris type 4 this is but fragment in the metaphysis which is postero medial while the medial malleolus part is postero medial a uh, postero lateral so your screw trajectory should be meet uh, you, you have marked that yes sir yeah so we planned that the epiphyseal screw should be going from antero medial to postero lateral like this so that will catch the uh, fragment and the metaphyseal fragment we will grow from front to back do you have another image meet uh, so for the screws so this I... is this is actually the metaphyseal image go back okay so so in 
the epiphyseal we have to go from anteromedial to posterolateral okay and not pure horizontal because if you pass a pure horizontal from the center then you would not have a good hold of the posterior part of the uh, epiphysis and the other which meet show was a metaphyseal trajectory yeah go ahead me so this metaphyseal trajectory we should be more uh, anteromedial yeah, I wanted to uh, display other image means actually, not this uh, coronal image. Anyways, let, let's go ahead and show what we have done. So, uh, what would the possible plans we should? Can you? So, can, can we, we conserve it? The first question is can we conserve it? Anyone? So, Sudhanshu is here. Sudhanshu, would you conserve it? Good morning, sir. No, no sir, I won't conserve it. I'll fix it. Why? Schools. Because the intraarticular component is there, intraarticular fracture has to be reduced perfectly and compressed. Yeah. So many a times, you know, we see tripling where minimally displaced, where intraarticular displacement is less than two millimeters. In those cases, when you do CT scan, you uh, if it's an inversion injury or eversion injury, then you invert the foot, apply a slab. Or a, uh, and and send patient for a CT scan so that you can see that in this position of the uh, limb the fracture reduces hundred percent or not and at times you will see it, it reduces fully and you can conserve but in this this was a, a fairly displaced and if you conserve sometimes it get further displaced and uh, may pause arthritic uh, risk in future so we must fix it okay so and close reduction. And uh, screw fixation is a good idea. Yeah, show what we have done. Yeah. yeah. So this is just a classification of the tripling fracture by parts. So we have two, three, and four. These are the based on the number of parts of the fracture. And uh, we have another classification where uh, we have done it, uh, where there's a lateral tripling, a medial tripling, and an intramalular. So uh, the particular fracture that we had looked uh, more like a medial tripling fracture. And so this is what we did in draw. Now, <clears throat> when we fix this epiphyseal screw, the medial malleolus fracture uh, was looking well aligned. And then we pass a metaphyseal screw. We, we saw that this metaphyseal spike is still lifted. So the compression was not uh, great. So I was not that happy, but uh, so Deepak or Sudhan, should do you go from posterior to anterior or anterior to posterior? For so such, whenever uh, you know, it requires an open reduction, though I prefer posterior to anterior. Sometimes what happens is this was a close reduction. No, we uh, are not doing in close open. reduction. Close reduction best method is to go from anterior to posterior. Yeah. So and you are happy with this uh, X-ray? Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm. I'm, I'm sure this is going to heal well, but it did not sir, give the compression which I was looking at, you know. So well, what I feel that when, when the fracture slips like this, there is an anterior periosteal uh, impingement. Ah. And get uh, impinged between the physis, uh, <coughs> epiphysis and metaphysis anteriorly. So sometimes they, that doesn't allow the fracture to get reduced completely. Okay, yeah. So that that's a that's a Good idea that I, I might have opened it in front and see if periosteum is lying in between. Yes, so it doesn't allow it. it you know what, like uh, Siddhanshu, when I kind of dorsiflexed the ankle, okay, sir. it was looking well aligned. Okay. So I don't think there was this thing. Sir, do, no, you, but... do, you, do you put the screw uh, after doing the opposite maneuver of the fracture? Then at that time it will get reduced and yeah, 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 that's what we did, you know, for the medial malleolus, we kind of everted the foot and it was, it was aligned. And then, uh, I think I, I kept the reduction and meet placed the screw. So that's what we should do. But uh, once we did that, I, we, I, we thought that, uh, with a metaphyseal screw will compress the fragment completely, but it did not. But then I thought that it's okay. It will heal. Anyways, let's see and we'll, we'll post what happens. This child is old and, uh, uh, you know, we, let's see what happens if the growth rate gets injured or not.
So these are the take home messages that if we have only a single view, we will miss this fracture. And triplane fractures are belong to a group of injuries called as transitional injuries, which occur in the group age group of 10 to 17. So for ankle fractures in this group, a CT scan would be a wise thing to do so that we don't miss this, the axial view. So Gaurav, putting a screw from posterior to anterior, you know, this, uh, we might have to open it and go between the tendo Achilles and the neurovascular structures and retract the muscle. That will be a bit mini open kind of thing. And that can be done. Yeah. Sir, so on the post post of X ray, there was a little anterior opening in the physis. Yeah, I uh, saw that. I, so I think uh, uh, the way you said, if we did a little bit of dorsiflexion, it would close, and then uh, in that same uh, maneuver or dorsiflexion, if you could pass the screw, it would stay. I would, I would suppose. Yeah. So what I feel and, is that uh, we could not maintain that maneuver at while passing the screw. I don't know whether this much of uh, opening will make a difference. We'll see in future. So, yes, Kapil. Kapil. Kapil is here. Kapil, would you do it differently? Are you with us? Kapil is senior uh, orthopod, so he, he have a lot of experience in it. Anyways, let's let's move on to a few more cases which are very interesting. Yeah. So we have eight year old girl. Yes. Mm -hmm. Presented with complaints of pain and swelling in the left wrist and forearm. There was history of fall twelve days back. The parents noticed the deformity 12 days after the injury. And on clinical presentation, there was a dorsal bump and there was limited and painful supination. Uh, these are her radiographs showing a Galea Z fracture, AP and lateral Galea. So now, Deepak, do you agree that this is Galea Z? Or Gaurav? The radius is fractured and the ulnar, distal radio ulnar joint get yeah, yeah, looks, yeah. looks distracted. Subluxation of DURG, this is a typical galaxy. But sir, uh, what might happen is she might be having some torus fracture or something like that, which mm. further collapsed and then led it to further subluxation of the DURG with time. Yeah, that, that's difficult to explain. But uh, somehow like uh, the what mother told us that child was like uh, kind of hiding the trauma which okay. she was a bit afraid and after one week they saw that, that the dorsal bump is increasing and that's how they came to us after 12 days so now this is not a fresh injury this is 12 days old <clears throat> so what to do for this 12 days old injury with limited supination this will require uh, proper reduction of the radius and reduction of the DURG and fixation. And fixation. What if this reduction doesn't come because it's 12 days old? Would you do osteoclysis of radius? Yes, sir. Because without reducing the deformity of the radius, you'll not be able to reduce the DURG. And here, the reduction of DURG is more important than the pronation mm. supination. Can you uh, can you just correct the rotation and see what happens in future and come back at later date or it should be done at this point at 12 days of injury? Can, can that be an approach? So rotation, rotation will be corrected only when the deformity will be corrected. If deformity is not... So your, your thought is we have to correct it by any means. If it is not coming, then you osteoclysis, you reduce radius. Yes. Any other yeah. thoughts? So... So this was in, this came to my mind. Getting a elbow. <laughs> this uh, Raghavendra is here. Kapil, Sharad, any Sudhanshu. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get it, uh, Deepak. So any, just, any uh, other thought? Getting elbow x-ray also, just to rule out. To rule out? 
to rule out what proximal radio ulnar joint injury ha ah, okay proximal radio ulnar joint was uh, okay let's take it that way any any other comment pronation injury na sir because our angulation is on the dorsal aspect so the dr is disrupted so i would like to give a manner of supination with the uh, i mean manner and pressure over the angulation which are there is a deformity so give a trial of close reduction and then see it again that that's that's right now we 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 all know that that we have to do the question was what if it doesn't reduce now sometimes we see plastic deformation they it doesn't reduce and <laughs> sir if it is it doesn't reduce then we may go dorsally percutaneous open and then put a kvr and then angulate it yeah but will... the key thing is we have to align the radio ulnar joint that that is must because we just But cannot I... keep on waiting that let let it heal remodel because this sort of injuries you know it will keep on Uh, rotating more, and we have seen some patient with pronation fixed deformities, and then we have to osteotomize them in a later date. Yeah, but we were kind of fortunate in this case. Goda, show what happened. What type of injury and how do you manage? So it is a type two Walsh classification, molar displacement of radius due to pronation force. and our plan was to give a cast to improve supination and correct the residual deformity later if we would not be able to correct it in relaxation under ga so uh, but as we gave traction and counter traction we were able to reduce the druj disruption and properly uh, satisfactorily reduce the fracture in this case so these are the immediate post operative images showing good reduction and the lesson we learned from this case is close reduction under adequate relaxation can be successful in late presentation as well yeah so we we felt a nice pop of uh, distal ulna reduction into druj and then uh, we did the three point pressure and then as raghavendra said then we applied plaster in supination so that we counteracted the rotation the pronation injury yeah if uh, sir sir one question sir if yeah. we have to open it from which side you will open i would i i would like to open it from volar side and because that is compression side if um, i just want to somebody told dor dorsal side uh, any comments on that so, i mean uh, open means i i it will not require a formal open but to just do an osteoclysis whatever okay. callus is it just uh, osteotomize and then you reduce it so you are not going to fix it so dorsal mini thing is okay okay because yeah in volar side you will come across the vessels and also dorsal is okay yeah so we we have 10 minutes and we have to go through three quick cases yes need shoot so we have a 7 year old boy who presented who had a history of falls from a uh, from a swing one day back and he landed on uh, on the feet with a <coughs> supinated uh, left ankle so on examination there was tenderness of the medial muscles and swelling over it as well so as we can see on the x ray uh, this is a, a straightforward assault as a type 3 injury and uh, now meet uh, Where is the real X-ray? Now this is uh, image intensifier image, buddy. Where is the X-ray? Do you have X-ray? I think uh, yeah, I have not added to this presentation. Okay, the X-ray should be placed. Anyways, so this is uh, Gaurav. How would you treat it? So I would like to close reduce it and fix it percutaneously. Okay. How to now? Do you can see this. How would you see that your reduction is okay? Sir, I would either see on an uh, on the CM if I am able to make out. Otherwise, I can try to do an arthrogram. Yeah, that that that's right. The arthrogram is a good action. So. what if you are not able to achieve good reduction close reduction 
then, then of course you you would not you should not hesitate to do right. open reduction right yeah yeah so let's see how how it went actually this is more displaced than what it looks here yeah meet show what yeah. we have done so the options that we had was uh, open and uh, anatomically reduce it or uh, should we go for a close reduction and internal fixation so uh, this is what we performed we first marked the medial mass fragment and uh, after that we used the joystick maneuver we passed the ky in the fracture fragment lifted it up and uh, we managed to reduce it in a acceptable manner and after that to confirm the reduction as uh, sir mentioned, we performed an arthrogram. Following this, uh, the reduction was acceptable. So we passed a guide wire and then subsequently we passed a screw and uh, compressed the fracture. So these are the uh, interop uh, images that we had, the final interop images. And this is the post-op uh, X-ray, the immediate post-op X-ray. Right. So other, you know, the problem is whether this 4 mm cc will go or not. That's the question. So always uh, what we do is we have a <clears throat> magnification thing or what you say calibration of your x-ray. So you can measure the exact width or height of epiphysis. So wherever you do x-ray, if you have x-ray at your center, or you are getting x-ray at some other center, make sure that calibration is right and your magnification, you should be aware. What if this, the size of epiphyse was a little thinner or, or smaller, then this screw would be going through the articular cartilage. So if you don't have four millimeter screw, then you can have three millimeters, 3.5 millimeters, whatever screws or uh, you know Herbert screws of this length should be managed. But we measured that this is about 5 millimeter size. So our 4 mm cc will go through. And the thing, we, we always thought that it will need an open reduction. But with this joystick kind of thing, which Meet suggested that let's do a joystick. So it's a very good idea. With a joystick, you pass a temporary wire and you pass your guide wire and then fix it. So this is a good technique to deal with it. Yeah. Okay, meet good points. Move ahead. Hmm. So the next case, we had a seven and a half year old boy who was a known case of polyostotic fibrous dysplasia. And he presented to us after a trivial fall with complaints of pain, swelling and in inability to move the right upper limb. So this is the radiograph showing fracture through the pathological pathology site, expansile lytic lesion. Uh, medullary light, it's present in the medulla. So it's passing through that fibrous, polyostotic fibrous dysplasia site. So it's a pathological, clear cut pathological fracture. So what is so, the natural? Uh, this, uh, huh, what's the natural history? Yes. Yeah. What is the natural history of pathological fracture in fibrous dysplasia? And can we treat it conservatively? And if not, what are the methods of surgical management? So Deepak, you are well read. I think uh, do you have you read the literature on this <laughs> fibrous exactly. dysplasia and path fracture? How it is different than the UBC and path fracture? I think, sir, uh, I've not uh, read the literature on fibrous dysplasia exactly, but what uh, I have experienced, I have seen others actually also. They have some non-union issues if the osteotomy or the fracture is through that fibrous lesion. <laughs> Mm -hmm. as compared to ABC and other lesions because they generally unite well. But in these cases, there can be a chances of uh, non-union and pseudo-arthrosis, okay. development of pseudo-arthrosis. Right. Another thing is the lesion will remain persistent because it's not an UBC. In UBC, in 10, yeah, to 15, 10, 10 to 15 percent would heal yeah. and um, they get to repeat fractures as Gaurav said. Bone graft doesn't work. Uh, that's right. <laughs> bone grafting gets re bone graft gets resolved. But our onco our onco surgeons, you know, sometimes uh, our onco surgeons sometimes they put graft, and uh, I've seen 
base phosphonate child is already on base phosphonate this is uh, polyostotic so endo team is already giving base phosphonate now how chinmay how would you treat this you plan to treat it with uh, some surgery and reduce it how would you do it or in class yeah anyone can take this how would you like to fix it a nail plate nails and what nail this is a young boy how what is the age goda 7 seven years 7 and, and a half years yeah so sir it is fixed with a toughing nail like enders and uh, give the cast for yeah. the long time yeah so enders uh, yeah. if, would be your choice you will, would be anti grade or retrograde so from distally i will pass it okay. just to get a, a more fixation so that's right we we uh, we chose titanium elastic nails yeah goda what is literature yeah so so we found a case uh, you know she was a case of polyostotic fibrous dysplasia and she had recurrent fractures since the age of 12 years and most of her fractures were treated conservatively so this case report enlightened that uh, primary management uh, for polyostotic fibrous dysplasia fractures is preferentially intramedullary nailing because it acts like an internal splint but conservative management has a role in certain cases so we went ahead and did closed reduction and retrograde tens nailing in this case but the challenge that we faced was uh, it was difficult to negotiate the second tens nail through the medullary cavity and hence we had to stop it midway and uh, but still we achieved good reduction and gave him a slat support see the the issue is the the margin of uh, lesion is very sclerotic Yeah. and so when you reach to that margin you know you might have to hammer your nail and with you know uh, you use tens the tip is bit uh, uh, you know it's curved and bit pointed with enders you may break the bone i can tell you that so whenever you are passing through the uh, sclerotic margin of the lesion you can have something to ream you know and you should choose something uh, the the you, the insertion way where you can use a flexible reamer now we i we did not recognize that problem so we just started retrograde to, to entry with all and we reached to the distal fragment fracture distal fracture site both the nails but after that it was a difficult part to uh, maneuver the nails through i thought fellows would finish it off but uh, i i had to get scrub and even uh, uh, it was a problem for me also to maneuver it but we had to uh, hammer it cautiously so that we don't break the bone at other side and we could maneuver one nail into the proximal part and we stopped uh, the second because the reduction was good so uh, yeah so the take home message was reaming has a definite role before passing the tens and such <clears throat> Yeah. So let's let's have a last case of today. Sir, can we pass a second nail from anti-grade? Yeah, you can pass anti-grade also, so that it has good functional. It has good functional length, and it may not go fully, but it can reach up to distal third. So that you know, actually the strength, as compared to second nail retrograde, if go for anti-grade, then it has good jamming. <laughs> <laughs> so if you pass anti grade then you have to curve it in the other way to neutralize the lateral yeah. wire yeah, yeah yeah and the problem is not anti grade or retrograde the problem is the cortical margin which which we need to penetrate okay. through mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so for medial a... the sujit is asking entry for medial tens so a bit of open incision One or two centimeters, and go a bit anterior on the medial, uh, you know, medial pillar. With an os, you you have to be very precise that your 
owl should not slip posteriorly or anteriorly. So the good way is to open for two centimeter, get it retracted, be on the bone and under vision gently uh, make your entry without uh, getting it slipped. Yeah, let's go through quickly through the last case. We have a four-year-old girl. Uh, she had a history of uh, RTA. She was hit by a car two days back. Uh, on examination, the left lower limb was lying in the flexion abduction exploitation. There was tenderness over the left hip. There was no abdominal tenderness or there was no uh, there was no blood in the urine. So these are the uh, X-rays that we have. So I think you can. Chinmay, would you like to read this X-ray? Yes, sir. Uh, on the right side, uh, there is a fracture in intertrochantric region, which is more of an undisplaced type. Uh, and on the lateral view, we can see the cortical line is well maintained. Uh, and, okay. Uh, so there is some in pubic fracture also, so in the AP. Mm -hmm. A vertical shear of uh, fractures. The acetabular fracture is there, which can be made out with a SI joint disruption, uh, with extending to the acetabulum posteriorly, as well as the superior migration of the superior pubic rami, as well as neck of femur fracture is there. So I, I won't say it is extending to acetabulum. This is not extending to acetabulum, but this is so a posterior ileum. Yes, sir. Posterior ileum fracture, ileum fracture, fracture and physal separation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, Vikas, how would you treat this? Sir, first, I'd like to fix the neck femur fracture. Hmm. Okay. Then we'll uh, give a track. How would you How would you fix the neck femur fracture? This three and a half year old girl. So it's pretty undisplaced. So we can uh, go for a screw fixation. Screw. Okay. Would you stop? Distal to physis or you'll cross the physis? Distal to physis. Okay. Okay. What other way you can pass? Smooth wires also. And that smooth wires can be gently, it can be through the physis also. That will not lead to problem. Right. And how would you manage this uh, physial separation thing? Uh, I think we, will, uh, we have to fix that uh, idiom so that we can manage that uh, there is a shear injury of uh, symphysis pubis also. Mm -hmm. It is also disrupted. So would you fix it? Yes, uh, we can try for tra traction. Okay. It is coming. Mm -hmm. any, any other view? How would you uh, treat this pelvic injury, Raghavendra? Sir, I need an inlet and outlet way if it is available uh, to see how far it is displaced. Uh, so, because there is a large chunk of ileum bone which is involved posteriorly, hmm. so that definitely it's going to unite. That is not an issue. Only thing is that vertical shear, how far it is unstable. So, I would like to just give a traction, sir. I would like to keep the child in a traction. Yeah. So, and this is a kind of eversion injury, you know. So, Intraoperatively, with a bit of inversion and traction, this uh, symphysis got partly reduced. So let's uh, let me show you. Uh, yeah, Meet, show the images. So the yeah. just quickly go through the three problems that we had. There was a neck of femur fracture, a symphysal disruption, and uh, an iliac uh, post iliac wing fracture. So the option that we have for fixation of the neck was either with a spica alone, a percutaneous K wire, or uh, a screw fixation. And for uh, symphysis uh, disruption, we could uh, either conserve it or open, uh, open and reduce it. And uh, for iliac wing fracture, should we conserve or should we intervene? So this was uh, the classification that is currently used is by Torode and Zig. And this was their paper published in JPO 1985, where they described four types of injuries, avulsion injuries, isolated iliac wing fractures, stable injuries, and the type four is unstable pelvic injuries. So, uh, so for the type 1 and type 2, conservative management is what they suggest. For uh, type 3, uh, if there's a superior pubic ramus fracture or a unilateral superior inferior pubic ramus or a symphysis pubic widening of less than 2 centimeters, uh, like we have in this case, then we can conserve it. If it's more than 2 centimeters, 
or if the fracture is going through the uh, SI joint, then uh, operative management should be uh, considered for this. Similarly, they also give a protocol for management of type four fractures, uh, where they, this does not uh, concern us in the current case, but this is this was what was uh, the suggested protocol. So, Neet, you can uh, share this article on a fellows group. This seems to be an interesting article. Yes, sir. So, so we we decided to yeah, yeah show the immediate post fixation. Yeah. So uh, we went ahead and we fixed the ne neck of femur with the two KY percutaneously past KYs, and uh, we uh, reduced the uh, we tried to gently uh, maneuver the uh, symphysis and under traction, the, this is what we could achieve and we applied a hip spiker. So I thought that this, uh, this separation, now we have seen a lot of uh, uh, bladder extrophy patients and their, their uh, uh, symphysial widening, they tolerate quite a bit of widening. So I think, I thought that this iliac wing will heal and this amount of uh, uh, this separation, you know, that will be tolerated well. I recently checked, do we have clinical picture, meet final clinical picture? Uh, so the patient came just a few days back. Yeah, yeah this is the x-ray. And she doesn't have any limb length discrepancy and uh, there is a full range of motion. So we have started mobilizing this child now. And I hope this uh, we conserve this. Let's see if it uh, makes any problem in future or not. We were conservative about this. Uh, sir, on and, first go, hmm. uh, sir, first go, if you put a pelvic number and go for the uh, re x ray does it change our line of management to treat these fractures? Sorry, what was it? Sir, uh, on the first first film X-ray, pre-op, we, we can see the pubis fracture, iliac wing fracture. And if you put a pelvic binder and do, and take another X-ray at the same time, do it change our line of management yeah. or will still go for the other? Or it is reduced see, or for, not? Uh, see, <laughs> the thing is that for neck femur fracture, you need to apply a spica anyways, right? If, whether you fix it or not. So, how would you put a binder when the spica is on or if you just put a binder then you are not uh, protecting the neck just give an idea that it will it will get close or not that's what i'm saying uh, no we tried there was partially it was reducible okay. but the question was to keep it reduced it was a problem you know we we kept it in the maneuver and applied a spica giving a bit of pressure from side but uh, we could not reduce it 100 percent but this much of displacement, I thought that this will not uh, produce problem. So we conserved. Now the time would tell us if someone has similar experience of this much of uh, symphysial widening had given problem, then let us know. I have treated many these uh, bladder extra few patients where the, our aim is not to align the symphysis 100%, but to that much so that this overlying skin can be closed. And those children, what they is, don't have any problem, you know, neither with length nor uh, with a, a range of motion. So what is your uh, protocol for the removal of the bias, especially when it's fixed with KY? Like, uh, I, uh, the, I kept the wire buried underneath the skin. I don't keep it outside because then it, there's a, that with the movement the child does with the spica, there is a granuloma formation is a rule always. So we cut it uh, and we, we hammer it underneath the skin. And then uh, once we remove the spica at six to eight weeks, we remove the wires as well. And then we keep either, we give a uh, AKBK brace for some time. As is a young child, for older child, uh, we give it for a pretty longer time. The young child, so two months is okay. I kind of always bury the wires because I, uh, when, whenever I kept it outside, you know, the granuloma and foul smelling and all those problems occur. Fine. So, uh, if I conclude uh, today's session, you know, we had uh, this month was busy with some trauma. We 
we had a montagia a day before yesterday and a lot of trauma cases came but each case had uh, a unique message and uh, we we understood that there is importance of getting a contralateral limb x-ray especially in fractures around elbow uh, we also understood that uh, whatever grave the injury looks like an examination under anesthesia might make your life easier. So you need a good general anesthesia with nice relaxation because once the child is completely relaxed, the, the treatment changes, the traction views would change your management. And always assess your deformities first with a CT scan or if required MRI. I, it has happened many times that I have advised an MRI and then I ask family that it doesn't need any surgical treatment. So that is fine. But if you don't do an imaging and fix it half-heartedly, then it will lead to problems in future. And each trauma case, case is different. A simple looking fracture can lead to big problem. And a big looking problem uh, gets managed simply. So they're very satisfactory uh, so thank you very much for your attention. I hope uh, this session will help all of you in your clinical practice. Thank you. Take care. Thank bye -bye. you very much. Yeah, bye-bye. Thanks, Deepak, for your inputs. Gaurav, Chinmay, Kaiser, and uh, uh, Vikas. Vikas it was spot on for all the fractures. He, he's a great trauma guy, I would say. Thank you, sir. Take care. See you uh, next, uh, this Saturday, day after tomorrow, we'll meet with a benign tumor by Mandeep. Mandeep is a great speaker and a, a huge experience. And his biopsy techniques, are that, that will be of great help to all of us. Yeah? Bye-bye. Thank you.